good to go. Excellent. Well, I think we are at the top of the hour, at least the half hour. Um, so let's get started. It only took about six times for me to get this right. Um, so, you know, thank you for, uh, for bearing with me here. Um, you know, first time using the, the Hopin platform. Hopefully all of you have had a, a great uh, conference so far um, at, our, at our Stronger by uh, you know, CyberSane conference. Um, you know, today, uh, myself, Michael Blumerick, and my, my cohort and partner in crime, Niasha Perry, we're going to be presenting to you the FAIR 101 and 102, the basics and beyond. And, you know, really, where would we be um, in, in presenting something like this uh, without starting something with a bad joke? So what is really FAIR, um, risk, and more? Uh, so, yes pun intended, bad joke intended, my apologies. And also I'm really looking forward to speaking with you. Um, and before my voice does get annoying, I will turn this over to Niasha uh, for introductions. Hi everyone, I'm Niasha. I'm the Senior Customer Advisor at CyberSane. I've been a part of the IT world for about six or so years. And as a previous IT auditor and financial customer success specialist, I can definitely appreciate risk management methodologies such as FAIR. The FAIR risk model, it, it's found a way to incorporate accuracy with simplicity. So I'm super excited to be speaking with you all today, and I will turn it over to my partner in crime and let him introduce himself. So go ahead, Michael. Thank you, Niasha. So hello, everyone. Uh, Michael Bloomred here. I'm a sales engineer with CyberSaints. Um, before, before joining this team, uh, I've been in the GRC space for coming up on eight or nine years now. And, um, you know, really the, I, I got the start in the space, um, in the, in the GRC consulting, um, capacity. And I worked in a variety of different industries, working with, with different teams and then kind of moved over into the, the sales engineering space. Um, and kind of why I'm bringing up, uh, my background is, you know, really this, this first component, uh, when, when I want to talk about risk and, you know, my, my background, um, some of the different industries that I've worked in directly, um, I've worked in kind of, uh, consumer goods services, um, kind of grocers worked in logistics, uh, worked with energy organizations, both in the energy transmission, as well as the generation space, um, insurance and, and, you know, really everything in between there. And what all of these industries had in common when it came to, to risks was, you know, first and foremost, they had methods of doing what? Identifying those risks. And yes, there are different methodologies and in the identification of risk, none of them are better than the others, whether it is, your, you know, maybe your initial assessments of risk, whether you're screening um, for, for different, you know, breaches in systems, um, you know, different, um, you know, evidence gathering methodologies, things of that nature and, and trying to find gaps. And, and then depending upon what is found, then what is that next step? The next step is saying, okay, what is that level of risk? You know, is, is this something to where, okay, we can, we can call down to our IT team. It's a quick patch. It's a, it's a quick fix. And, and we can move on about our day. Is this something like a, a log 4 J component to where, you know, this, this is just a kind of a worst case scenario. And, and it's a, it's a much larger issue. Um, you know, is this a, an insider risk? Um, to where, you know, someone is actively threatening your organization um, and, and they've been doing so in a, in a very kind of malicious way. But from the inside, is this a nation state, things of that nature, um, regardless of industry, regardless of how these risks are identified, regardless of the severity, at the end of the day, a decision has to be made. And... This is where across all of these different organizations that I've worked for, all of these different industries that I've, I've seen and, and been a part of, um, the decision process 
is fascinating. Some of which, so some of the decisions are, are very action driven. You have an immediate threat, you have an immediate risk, it needs to be dealt with. And, and there are immediate escalations, things of that nature. But then there are other risks that are, are more the risks of, of doing business. These risks that are, are almost perpetual in nature and, and that are going to be around you know, regardless of, of who is or is not involved in either the, the identification or, or even the, the threat component of it. And when it comes to making those types of decisions and saying, how do we treat those risks? How do we make sure that our organization is protected against those risks? Well, if I'm giving a risk report to an executive team and I'm saying, okay, here we have a, a, a list of red risks or here we have a list of yellow risks or high risks or medium risks or low risks. They have so much information thrown at them on a daily basis. And how can we better project to them what the impact to our organization could be if we don't treat these risks correctly? And, and you know, in, in this, in this, you know, kind of, story that I'm weaving for you here, the, the purpose is this, how can we very easily say to them in the event that these things or these requests that my team as either a security team or a risk team or a vendor risk management team, if we don't have these requests fulfilled, then things are going to happen to our organization or financial impacts are going to happen to our organization. And until I, I was more familiarized with the, the fair risk methodology, you know, it was all around metrics. It was all around the calculations and, and escalations and things of that nature. But with the fair risk method, we found a, a more simplistic way to go about the, the communication of risk while still being incredibly effective, impactful, and while still, while still allowing these teams to be incredibly actionable in the approach to these risks. Um, you know, I, I want to turn this over to Niasha to speak more about the kind of the components of FAIR and, and how this really rolls up into, into what I've been saying. Thank you, Michael. Um, so, yeah, so the FAIR ontology, you know, so basically from what I'm hearing, Michael is basically saying measuring risk is going to be a risk itself. So you not only having a set of standards, a set standard or a way to measure, you know, risk, it, it's going to allow companies to be creative, but it does also allow for some inaccuracies. So we have to find a way, you know, to lessen those inaccuracies, as well as provide a common language and a formula. So how does FAIR aid in that accuracy? And what's the formula? Risk equals loss event frequency plus loss magnitude. FAIR is about putting actual numbers to this loss exposure. You know, as Michael was stating, how much is at loss? So taking in, you know, all of all of this information, taking in information, looking at assets, threat actors, et cetera, and we're going to and you turn them into an entire scenario. So you turn them into a scenario, you identify the scope of the analysis, gather the data, make estimates for each scenario, make financial estimates for each scenario. And I know you're thinking, you know, estimates and accuracies. They aren't exactly synonymous, but this is where we measure twice and cut once. Once we have these estimated values, we are then ready to plug them into the fair risk software, run the analysis and capture those results. You know, let's document it. While performing these analysis, it's very important for you to document, you know, the scope as well as the reasoning and the basis for each value used inside this analysis. Now, at this point, 
we bring in the Monte Carlo engine because now we need to actually do the calculations. And this is what's going to bring that legitimacy to that analysis and give data to defend your results. So we have this financial scoring component. And to be honest, FAIR gives you all of the tools you need to calculate the results by yourself. But I don't know about you, I'm definitely not a mathematician and I'd rather be spending my time with my family than calculating statistics and probabilities. So let's take a step back and bring the humanity back into risk calculation. Have that same level of impact without the level of effort. And that's something that our solution can do for you. Well, what you're seeing here is our homegrown version of a risk calibration tool that uses, you know, the Monte Carlo function. It's a portfolio view of an organization's risk. You know, you we're running all of these complex calculations on the back end for you by just using a few, you know, data points provided by you and your team, loss frequency, loss magnitude. We've taken these numbers and we've created you know, almost instantaneously this risk analysis. And I'm going to let Michael walk you through details, um, more detailed of what you're seeing right now. Yeah, thanks, Niasha. So okay. in terms of the kind of the center of the screen, um, you know, front and center is is the data breach number of, of your average loss. And, and you can see kind of the, the chain going below that. And you have your loss frequency and loss magnitude, as, as Niasha mentioned. Um, what, what we're allowing for is essentially very basic data input. Um, and, and the calculations are being run behind the scenes that are giving you impactful financial information. So, you know, as I, as I kind of break this down, the loss frequency um, kind of to the lower left of data breach, that 0.25 number is essentially saying that we're expecting a minimum and that there will be some component of data breach. And I'm not talking, you know, newsworthy, you know, you know, PII, PHI um, being exposed, you know, just heck, someone in some way, shape or form resulted in a loss of data. We're expecting that at, at least as a 0.25, that is once every four years. We are expecting someone to do something silly within our organization to result in something that should not have been exposed, probably being exposed. And let's be honest, that's, that's probably a decent metric. Uh, most likely uh, at the bottom, we're looking at, you know, maybe once every couple of years and then the absolute maximum. If we're having a really bad year, we're going to be looking at this at least one loss event occurring or a little over one loss event occurring each year. Then when it comes to loss magnitude, we have our minimum our maximum and are most likely per these, these data breach numbers. Again, all of these are, are flexible and, and you know, these, are, these are data entry points. This isn't something that we're inputting for you. These are all data entry points that are available to you. The benefit of this, we are taking these six data points between loss frequency and loss magnitude. We're running that through a Monte Carlo analysis of a thousand simulations based on real world scenarios that we have an amazing data scientist here at CyberStrong who has, who has you know, helped develop this. And we've worked with um, you know, other, other you know, kind of thought leaders in, in the market as well um, in developing these scenarios. And what that has resulted in is per these scenarios, per this frequency, we are now looking at that data breach average, lo average loss of 6 million. So now, when you're speaking with your executive team or with your management team and saying um, we have you know, some, some new um, you know, potential risks pertaining to data breaches or ransomware or DDoS attacks or whatever it might be. And instead of going to them and saying, yeah, I think this is a medium risk, you can now go and approach them through the utilization of the FAIR methodology and saying, per our calculations, per our work that we've done here, and by calculations, I mean you've input data into our platform, we're doing the calculations for you. Um, you know, we have now essentially 
identified that this data be uh, this data breach risk could result in a six million dollar loss to our organization. That speaks volumes compared to a red, yellow, or green risk level, or a high, medium, or low risk level. And then there's other metrics at the very top of the screen, as you've probably seen already: minimum, maximum, most likely, etc. Um, there are other components as well within the uh, the fair risk methodology that allows you to trend these risks over periods of time and perform kind of baseline testing uh, versus reevaluation testing as well. Um, which, if any of you are interested in seeing that, you know, please, please let us know, and I'm I'm happy to uh, to show that to you in in greater depth. Um, but you know, ultimately, this is. This is one of the many reasons why uh, we've chosen to to implement the fair risk methodology into the the cyber strong platform. So, you know, a couple parting thoughts. This solution, of course, this solution did not happen overnight. Our chief product officer, Patrick O'Reilly, you know, he saw a method that is adaptable, actionable. And this method is going to allow, you know, your company and, you know, the way that your organization views and measures risk to also be adaptable and actionable. And so when thinking about it and implementing it, we now have a way and we now have our tool that can help you measure and manage these risks giving you something to actually present to your, you know, C-level execs that they can look at and instantly understand, giving you a way to speak to people outside of, you know, you know, professionals outside of the GRC world and, you know, of risk and, um, risk and compliance. So, you know, when you're presenting, you're presented with a risk decision, you have to be able and be prepared to defend and challenge that decision. And our deployment affair allows you and prepares you to do just that. And any thoughts, any last parting thoughts, Michael? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess the last thing I'll say before we kind of open things up to questions um, is, you know, really, again, you know, forward looking. Um, when when I was setting up these these different risk solutions in the past, um, that it was it was good enough, and it, they they were very effective. And when when these risk teams and when these these compliance teams and cyber teams were were essentially going up and saying, hey, we've identified these components and we're requesting X amount of money for our our budgets. And it's because of these red, yellow, and green risks and, and all of this really great stuff and all of these great metrics. And they would come back with maybe like 60% of the budget they requested. They were thrilled. They were like, wow, this is really great. And we're, we're in a different world now um, from, from when I started in this industry. And it's, again, money talks. And, and being able to, uh, to really have a, a more direct... Um, financial impact tied to the risks that you were presenting to your organization. It is something that our, our CPO, you know, Patrick O'Reilly and, and others in our team, they really saw the value in. And, and it's why we, we've implemented this within our platform and why have, it's been a pleasure to, to speak with you about this today. Um, 